I look a lot older, Ian. The bags under my eyes. You're looking fresh. You look fresh. Welcome, everyone. You look great, Patrick. Thank you, Ian. You're welcome. To this completely unnecessary podcast for Tuesday, May 11, 2021. We're officially in spring, and I'm officially one year older. One more spin around the sun alongside Ian Ferguson. Hey, what's up? I'm Pat Country. <laughs> On the show today, we'll be talking about... It's uh, my new tagline. Hey, what's going on? We'll put on a t-shirt. Hey, uh, what's up? Game Builder Garage. Pat buys a graded game by accident. What? Portable Dreamcast for sale. We'll talk about that in the intro. And we'll do uh, we'll do a fucking uh, Patreon poll topic. And we'll do voice message stuff. I just uh, want everyone to know that we're really trying this week. We're really trying to pull it together. We're trying to make a soup out of the leftovers. Why do you keep saying every week, Ian? We're, we're, we're professionals. <laughs> we are professionals. They wouldn't. Re- they wouldn't know that we're, a, we're pulling this out. They're going to know. Too. They're going to know this is a dry week. No, no Ian, you got too much that imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're confident that this is going to be an entertaining podcast. Um, what did you do this weekend, Ian? Before I get to my fun filled week, did my taxes over the weekend? Yeah, I mean Monday. And the weekend, as we've decided, yeah, is everything like, from one, Wednesday to Monday. At least Thursday. Thursday yes. to Monday. Yes, I did my taxes. That was that was that. Uh, real good time doing the taxes. <laughs> um, the tax also, man. I also went out and got breakfast for the first time in over a year uh, yesterday. That was fantastic. Did you go to a place nice, like Banana Republic? No. I mean, breakfast Republic, not Banana, Banana Republic. Republic. <laughs> get some nice shirts at Banana Republic. <laughs> no, I went to Old Town House, uh, which is where I... Oh, yeah. The first place I figured Proud I'd sponsors go. sponsors of, of the NES Marathon. That's right. Best. Proud food sponsors. <laughs> Just... Just throw containers that, full of eggs. That and Sunday bacon. morning when when Pat's barely awake and Ian is 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 on a second high of something when we have, we get, we we dive into those uh, breakfast burrito leftovers because right. we get them on Saturday morning. That's right. Yeah, they do a good breakfast burrito too. But yeah, Fantastic. it was strange just sitting there and hearing people chatter and hear like the clank of dishes. It was just a very alien sort of thing. But it was that alien, really? Yeah, it was. That. It was weird. It was definitely strange doing it again. Um, other than that, though, no, my weekend was really un- uneventful. Oh, what about yours? I heard someone might have had a birthday. I had a birthday. So, um, first of all, I got the second vac shot on uh, Friday, and it was like it, there was less people. I was kind of alarmed, thinking, "Oh, is there less interest?" But I was like, "No, I think it's just a, a lot of people have gotten it in, the, in the few weeks in between." Um, but like, I got in, and I got the shot within like three and a half minutes of parking. Four minutes, just strolled on in. There was like ten people in front of me. Less stations. Shoulder's still sore from Friday. It's a li- like a little bit. So the shoulder was, it was interesting. The shoulder was n- not as painful overall, maximum pain, but it's lasted a little bit. Uh, Ian, you, you prepped me to be like miserable the next day partially. You're like, ah, 3 a.m. It's my shot. I started uh, feeling better. So I like, I was like getting up middle of the night. I was like, no, it, it never really hit me on the Saturday. I, I just, wasn't miserable, but I was just saying that up to 24 hours later is when you can feel them. I just felt, 48 hours. Well, I, I felt the next day like I'd gone through like a fucking war. Like I just felt like I ran a marathon. Like my muscles were aching more than usual. I work out on Fridays, like legs and shoulder stuff. So like it exacerbated all that pain. And I just felt like a little off, like a little off, like a little bit, like slightly, almost, almost like a feeling of like dehydration. That's how I felt. Mm-hmm. I could have been dehydrated. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's pretty but, much how I felt. But, it was, but I was totally above my wits. I wasn't feeling sick or nauseous. I was like, okay, this is not bad. It's not bad. And so I went over, uh, Frank made, made some meat sauce. Delicious. Uh, on uh, Sunday. Was, at first, he's like, yeah, I want sushi. I'm like, that's great, Frank. It's not your birthday. It's, it's not your but birthday, not, But he Frank said, no, I'll make meat sauce. I'll get some revs. Um, and so we did that, and I brought over the Carvel ice cream cake. I buy myself a Carvel ice cream cake every year. What kind did you get? There's only the one you can get in, the, in your local freezer section. Uh, it's, the, it's the white, the, ca- the, the, white cake with vanilla no, vanilla icing, vanilla ice cream with the, with, the, with the crunchies. And chocolate. It's both. It's both. That's the only thing they make. Unless you get like a Fudgy the Whale. I was going to say Fudgy the Whale or... But you can't get those. There's, there's, there's only one place down in the border that's Carvel. Cookie the whole, Puss. On the whole county. We don't have a local Carvel, unfortunately. Right, we don't. We have a Baskin Robbins. Have I ever told you what Cookie Puss's name used to be? I don't think he did. Celestial Person. Really? Yep. It was a god? CP. He was an alien. 
Cel- it was celestial person, and then they changed it to Cookie Puss. And here's my favorite fun fact: this makes well, me laugh every Car- time. Carvel lore. This makes me laugh every time. Every St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> they they do a special cake. They do Cookie Puss, but it's Cookie O Puss. Yes, that I do it. I did do that. <laughs> it, it's a Cookie Puss, but it's green. <laughs> yeah, there's also one for Halloween, I believe too. There's different colored. Ones oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All the all the commercials from the 70s, and 80s are online. Frank told me that as a kid, they used to make fun of Mr. Carvel's voice. They used to make fun of his voice. He, because he was a Mr. Guy, original guy. I think he died like late eighties, early nineties. God bless you, Mr. Carvel, for creating uh, you and uh, Friendly's neck and neck for the, the for the most creative ice cream creations. But I think Carvel puts it over the top with with their ice cream, cakes. Mr. Carvel, and, and the flying saucer. I mean, I knew Carvel doing that the first, and then everyone else got you know their own rip off of the, of the flying saucer uh, after that. That's the cookie sandwich. Cookie sandwich. Yeah. Well, it's on. It's a wafer. Yeah. With, it's, uh... But like when you were a kid, see if you grew up in a, an Italian American family. They like the adults like shitty ass rum cake so I much. I love rum cake. Not when you're seven. So sure, it, so, that's fair. So they wouldn't get. They usually this would be on like holidays. They wouldn't even get a regular cake, a chocolate cake for the kids. They would just get the fucking you know twelve giant twelve pack of the of the flying saucer. We loved it though, but like I used to always try rum cake when I was a kid. And never got into it. I probably would like it better today as an adult. Probably it's one of my favorites. But yeah, but, I mean, yeah, it's, that's that's a really Ginzan dessert. The you know the rum cake at the at the events here. Sorry. Uh, so I found out who I um who I shared a birthday with. I always knew I shared a birthday with, with the lovely Rosario Dawson. She's a year older. We're destined. Um, but I know Kermit shares my, my birthday. Nice. Kermit, uh, abolitionist John Brown, uh, Billy Joel, I did know that. Uh, so, yeah, I got, I got a nice uh, nice little, very eclectic group of, of, of people I share. But that's it. May 9th is a barren birthday day. I was looking it up. I was like, that's really it. There's not really, it's a, we're a bunch of weirdos, I guess, on May 9th. Not a lot of famous people on May 9th. I was just kind of surprised about that. Share a birthday with John Brown? Yeah. That's neat. I'm going to share an attitude. Fucking, I'd fucking take a sword to some people uh, yeah. and try to I read a good uh good uh biography of him uh, last year two so, years ago because it's the first time I saw it trending on May 9th for his birthday because he, he was born in 1800 and people were like oh I never learned about him school we learned about him I learned about John Brown he's well, awesome no yeah. you should, everyone should read about John Brown <laughs> yeah you know people thought you know he's a little nutty but you know yeah. he was gonna gonna do a try to do a whole slave rebellion in the south that was never gonna happen but you know he was he's, he was a very um, complicated man from what from what the stories are. Yes, but you got to be to, in order to do that. Like, you know, treat his family like shit. But you know, he didn't like slavery, which is a good belief to have. You know, yeah, we're all complicated. We're, we are all complicated people. Probably whipped his sons, but like you didn't want to see other people getting whipped. That's probably what happened. <laughs> probably one of those sort of types. It's one of those like you know fire and brimstone probably type of people, like mm-hmm. in the personal stuff. Yes. You know, and those are not people that, you know, you want to be around, like, personally. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah was, read about John Brown if you haven't. Sorry. So, um, the the Venom Let There Be Carnage trailer came out. And the reason we have to discuss is that we discussed the first Venom trailer and the symbiote. Uh, remember the symbiotes? The oats. And, how we, and that's where the Quaker Oats uh, fear came out. Ian has a, a, has, is afraid of the Quaker Oats guy. So I made oatmeal cookies a couple weeks ago, and Vani had to, was at the grocery store, and she had to buy some oatmeal. And she was like, do you want the Oats Man, or do you want the not Oats Man? And I was like, the not Oats Man, please. Um, I would have loved to, loved to try to cook Ian. I, I needed to perfect them. That's the only reason you didn't get them. Mm-hmm. They were a little underbaked. Mm-hmm. You can, uh, if you under, underbake Oatmeal cookies is just like oatmeal then. So I was making I was making I was making <laughs> lace cookies, which are uh, a lot of brown sugar and butter, and they're delicious. Brown sugar. But you want them to I, I didn't cook them crisp enough. The whole thing is they're supposed to be very thin and they're supposed to like snap. You know what we're deadly? Well, everything little Debbie did was the, the little Debbie fucking oatmeal sandwiches that Love were just cream in the middle and two it was like eating like two cookies at once with a with a cream filling they're fantastic too because they watering. had they had oatmeal in the title so people are like yeah, yeah they're probably no, healthier it's, than healthy. Other, yeah, yeah. it's a thousand calories <laughs> in one they're healthy uh oatmeal cream pies were one of my absolute favorite snacks growing up just the fucking most delicious god little debbie your reason why i still have baby fat um so venom let there be carnage is number one trending trailer came out yesterday in the 10th it's a sequel to Venom, which came out what nineteen or eighteen. And I I railed, like, I warned people not to see this stupid movie. Came out in nineteen eighteen. I said I said I said nineteen or eighteen. <laughs> yes, I know Patrick. Not during World War One, um, in the trenches. So this comes out. The only thing I'm going to say about this is that I didn't see the first movie. I don't want to see the first movie. I don't want to see 
uh, again, uh, Venom without Spider Man is like, what's the point? But this looks like a, this trailer. I'm not, I'm not going for a hyperbole. I don't know if Ian saw it. This looks like a, looks like a parody of what a Venom movie will would be. It's like wise cracking Venom, his the symbiotes helping him make eggs and waffles for breakfast. Yeah, and it's like what? Did you see the trailer? Yeah, it looks it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole breakfast scene is just fucking bizarre. Uh, that's not from the source material, this stuff. That's not how he was. I don't know if they changed him to be like that goofy, but he was. He was always an anti-hero. He was always still crazy, even when he was doing good. Well, at the end of the trailer, uh, he threatens to eat the lady at the, uh, at the, at the convenience store. He doesn't yes. have the chocolate, yes. So, like, that's the... I, this is awful. I'm sorry. This fuck the Spider Verse Sony thing is awful. And because you out there saw the first Venom movie, we now always get a shitty sequel. We're gonna get a fucking awful Morbius movie that no one's gonna uh, like or watch probably. Uh, with, with, with what's his name? That's uh, you know pretending he's a vampire while he's filming it. Method acting. Jared Leto because he has to method act as the jo- fuck you. Just do your job. You're acting as a character. Ridiculous. Sorry. He is kind of ridiculous. Sending Will Smith, you know, use condoms. Oh, Will Smith would have fucking beat the shit out of him on, on the Suicide Squad set. Are you kidding me? You hear about that shit he did? I did, yes. Fuck you, Jared Leto. I'll tell that if I see you. It's ridiculous. Sorry. Like Go some on. sort of Suicide Squad. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean... I'm Fra- canceled now because I don't like Jared Leto. Go on. This looks bad, but uh, Woody Harrelson looks like he'd be amusing. Woody Harrelson's like one of those actors that... He's always amusing. He's always really good... But you don't go, you don't like ever say, I'm gonna watch that because of Woody Harrelson. When you see him in something, you're like, he's really good. I might. I might. They got rid, they got rid of his not clown. Gonna, they got rid of his clown gonna... here, though. They have the wig in the first one. You see that, like, the, he had like a clown hair wig. No, I've never seen the first one. Um, I will maybe at some point uh, uh, in the comfort of my own couch. And maybe I would watch this uh, on my couch. I did not know Woody Harrelson was in the first one, too. Yeah, just for the tag. They, they, oh, gave, okay. they gave him the crazy. And when he first showed up, Cletus Cassidy. It amazes Spider-Man three, uh, 344 or three sixty three sixty one was the first full uh, full appearance. Three three forty four was a cameo where he I I I know this shit. Um, I think it's three forty four. Um, he had a bunch. Of, he had curly wild hair, so they threw a wig on him like a Ronald McDonald wig oh. in the first one. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Woody Harrelson Fine. though always looks a lot younger. He's like the one white guy where you're like, wow, he he's aged he very well. He doesn't age. It's that hemp lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, he does not. You, you see the first season of True Detective, which is amazing. No, with, I, with him I need to, but so, I have not. In True Detective, there's a lot of flashbacks and modern day. So in modern day, Woody Harrelson is just like, well, he looks older because they put a little... You're 59 years old. I was going to say 60. 59 years yeah. young. He yeah. looks like he's 45. Um, so in True Detective, which is now, what, like six years old the first season? Amazing the first season. Um, they do flashbacks to mm-hmm. like 15 years before. And he, the only thing they do is like give him more hair, but he looks younger just with more hair. You're like, oh, yeah, he looks a lot younger with more hair. <laughs> or like they, they, they like played up his paunch, you know, things like that. That's it. I'm sure. like, wow, yeah, he looks really good. It's it's that nice lifestyle of playing the bongos and the hemp stuff and, you know, a little CBD, a little, little, little the marijuana. Yeah, I like Woody Harrelson. He doesn't act enough and stuff. He was great in Ill Country for Old Men. Didn't see that either. You ever saw... I don't watch movies. What? You never saw that? Yeah, no. Seriously? <laughs> What's that what from? I don't know. What's that from? I don't know. Oh. What? You have no idea what that's from? No. Okay. We'll come back to that. Moving on. All right. Uh, Metroid Prime Switch ports tricky? Uh, so um, people were uh, reacting to one of the um, original Metroid Prime uh, Retro Studios devs. Uh, saying that it would be difficult. This is on like a, a forum. It would be difficult to do a switch port. And then he was harassed online due to skeptical views. I don't know if this is something lost in translation about this, but um, it was a face. It was, it was a Facebook post. That's a great uh, place always for for conversation. That's yes. always uh, even keeled and you know sourced out. And yeah, so um, Metroid. The fans- only place better would be a YouTube comments section. <clears throat> I think that might be better than Facebook, actually, at this point in time. <laughs> um, responding to a comment on a Facebook post uh, by Metroid fan site Shine Sparkers, Michael Weekin, the former lead designer on all three Prime titles, discussed how he believes a Metroid Prime trilogy port on Nintendo Switch, port having a Nintendo Switch, is very unlikely. It would take a lot of effort, so I'm skeptical it will happen, he says. It was straight, if it was straightforward to update MP1 and, and 2 to motion controls, but converting MP3 to normal controls would be a Herculean effort. 
as it is scripted very specifically using volumetric triggers to detect the motion in precise manners to do specific switches, and the bosses are tuned to take into account the ease of ease of gestural aiming. I never heard of that term. So people went nuts. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, the post was removed because people went off on them. He also said the biggest issue is Retro uh, no longer has functional editor tools to work with the prime code base. So everything has to be brute force hard coded. So it wouldn't be just simple, just okay, we're gonna import the fucking unit. Right. So it, it's yeah. a it's a two part thing. There's one and two might not be so hard to translate to the switch, but they don't have the tools to really access it and do the port. And then on top of that, he feels that three would just be too hard to um Remove from the the context the of motion controls, um, you know. So well, to the difficulty tuning. I, there's like, motion controls on the on the switch, but I get it. It would be kind of it'd be well. Weird they're diff- they're very different. I mean, they're not IR. They're and it's not. It, it would be a it would be a pain in the ass. It yeah. sounds like. Um. So he doesn't think it'll, it, it'll it'll be done. It's not that he said it can't be because he says it doesn't think it will be. Um, I'm also assuming that Retro is a fairly small studio in that. Uh, they probably don't have all the manpower to work on part four and a brand new port of the, the trilogy. Sure. Um, but as this article points out, there have been games on the, uh, that have been ported to the switch, n- notably Mario galaxy. And we haven't seen skyward sword yet, but it's coming um, that were skyward sword, especially was heavily uh, reliant on motion controls and they found a way to port it. So it really just depends, I think on how badly, you know, it comes down to how badly Nintendo would want to do it, and my guess is Nintendo's not going to want to do it that badly. They'll wait till the uh, well, what was the 35th anniversary? No, this year is 86 Metroid. That's right, it is the 35th. Too many. There's too many things happening around 86. You know, you know 85, 86. There's too, there's too many, too many big games. You got, you gotta, you need some more time in between. Um, this is what I'm going to say about people that, of course, are idiots and going after a guy for posting something. It's like. I would I would trust the guy who made the games more than you, random ass Facebook user. I'll trust trust the guy who, who spent years of his life making the games you love. And, and I mean like they're babies. They are. They're babies. Shut up, you fucks. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like oh, I don't know about this. Uh, what what do you know? I, I I think I know about games because I read blog posts and you know it's, like, it's ridiculous. That's all I think it's interesting to know that. You know, well, they did. They did. The, they did the, the re-release. Was it the Wii? They did the trilogy uh, thing on the Wii. Yeah, that little steel case the little set. S- yeah, the steel I should have got one that. Is. It's a nice one. This is so ridiculous. I'm sorry. I had the Venom trailer opening, and he's making fucking breakfast. It's like the first thirty seconds of the trailer. It's dumb. It's ridiculous. Sorry. Moving on. Closing that. Uh, you want to talk about Sega being cool with fan games? Yeah. So uh, Sega is cool with sure. fan games. All right. That's, okay. Hey. Next. I'm <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Um, so Sega just, uh, it's uh, Sega said yesterday, they're cool with fan games as long as no profits are the involved. Value. Um, this is kind of just a continuation of how they've always felt. Uh, notably, Sonic Mania started uh, as a fan game uh, oh. by Christian Whitehead. And that's that's where they kind of noticed him. He, he worked on fan games and... Uh, he ported Sonic CD to mobile devices, and then they grabbed him and had him make Sonic Mania. So uh, it's nice to see Sega not care about this when Nintendo is constantly um, shutting down fan games. I still think, I understand being a fan, I still think it's better to just take all that passion that you have for this game that you're making and make your own original property. Do your own thing. Wouldn't get, the, wouldn't get, wouldn't get noticed as well, that's the thing, but... It's hard to market. I feel like Sonic is more ripe for fan games than something like Mario right now, too, because and I I love Sonic the Hedgehog, but um, Mario games, there's there's a a legacy of quality there. There's not a whole lot of what people want with Sonic games coming out. Sonic Mania was fantastic, but again, it started in the fan community. Um, So I feel like there's a lot of people who I understand it more with Sonic than something like Mario, because you're trying to recapture something that is no longer there. Whereas Mario is just going along, having his games released to, you you know, you you get like three Mario games a year. 8.0 to 9.5 ratings out of 10. You know, it's in the bag. We're we're spoiled. The Mario fans are spoiled. He's spoiled. He's spoiling us. So and plus Sega is such a minute, small company compared to Nintendo in terms of 
in terms of money and, and influence. So it's like they, they're the people that do the, do the Comic Con thing, you know, with the hot, the hot dogs and a guy in a Sonic costume jamming out. Like that's, oh, those were super fun. But, that, but that's Sonic. Yeah. They're, they're like, they're like the, 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 the people that are cool. Uh, you know, you know how the cool people show up at the party, but they're they're really they're yeah that, that I can't be around them too long, but okay that that's that's Sonic, you know I mean that's the people behind it, yeah you know, they're not in control of anything they're not in control of anything anymore basically yeah the movie's a success because we we don't care we're just we'll just give us the money to make the movie we don't give a shit they didn't give a shit about the movie because they let it they let the design be whatever the, the people wanted obviously. So they, they, it's they, not like they're too small to stop it though. I mean, if they wanted they to didn't stop care. people, they could. But they didn't care about the movie though. Going back to that. Oh no, I, yeah, well, whatever. You think Nintendo would have allowed that? Oh yeah, Mario looks like a dragon in our movie. No, n n no, well, they, I mean, we never got. There that. is the original Super Mario Brothers movie. Well, that's that's a whole other time and place. It's 90, was it ninety four, ninety three? I'm just saying, Nintendo did it. <laughs> well, they, well, they they gave the rights to it. Didn't care. <laughs> But at that point, they were, you know, they were knee deep in, you know, battling, ready to battle Sony or get the Sony CD thing going. That was a, that was a weird time for Nintendo. Like knee deep in the dead. That was a weird time pre N sixty four for Nintendo. That's when things went awry. We'll just say. Um, all right. So yeah, the goal isn't to stifle everything, like you said. So okay, well, it's cool, I guess. Yeah. There was that cool. We, we talked about that cool uh, Sonic like three D thing. Remember that demo a couple years ago? There was like tech demo thing. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool, cool Sonic stuff. fan stuff. But so basically, just want to so um, someone from Sega came out and said, "Hey, Sonic fans, I appreciate you all reaching out with concerns over fan games and monetization. So long as no profit is involved, there's usually no issue with y'all using our Blue Boy to hone your art and dev skills." The only the only caveat would be is that the argument can be made if you, legally is that well. If you're doing like a YouTube video showing off your stuff and making money, or you have a website showing off and you have ads, I mean that's how Nintendo got the ROM sites destroyed. Sure, partially because oh they're making money. They have you know they have all the ads are running. They're making money every month. We know about how much money they're making. But that's that's a technical thing. But anyway, well, it's oh, it's good Sega. I mean you pretty much don't have a choice, you know. But on the on the on the on the other side, allegedly, um, they went after someone. Uh, it was told to me allegedly. They wanted to do, I won't say which console, but one of the Sega consoles, they wanted to do like a, like a review book. And uh, Sega was not happy with the idea of that. Mm. And that was something that they keep their fucking nose as out of because they, you're allowed to do a review book. You know, you don't need someone's permission. It doesn't, right. it doesn't be authorized or licensed to do that. So, you know, so maybe they, they erroneously thought, you know, we can make money on it. Well, you couldn't, or you shouldn't be able to. But, you know, no, no company is perfect. Companies are like John Brown. That's right. <laughs> they go a little too far sometimes, but good intentions. <laughs> All right. Um, I have good intentions at ultimatenintendo.com. I had a sale that happened on my birthday. Thanks to everyone who participated in the sale. Uh, you can get guidebooks. You can get not for resale Blu-ray, the death of physical media, RBI baseball stickers. The roll is still, it's still hefty, even though I've sold to some. It's still a hefty roll. Uh, Costco toilet paper roll and the enamel pins with our cute faces. Maybe we'll get out to a convention later year. You can see these cute faces in, in person. Maybe. Maybe we'll see that. We'll see that. And I'll be uh, on Twitch Wednesday night, twitch.tv slash uh, country code. Ian loves to show up and, and there every week with bells on. He likes to schmooze with everyone. That's right. In there. He likes the kibitz. You know, he kibitz. Likes, he likes to I've used the term. All the time. Good term. And I'm Cameo, cameo.com slash pack country. I can wish you a happy birthday. Instead of you guys, thanks for everyone for the, for the well wishes, by the way, on Twitter and Facebook. You want to talk about this uh, fucking thing? Wish I had more to say about it. So <laughs> Nothing to say about this. I don't really have anything to say about it. We can move on, honestly. I, I, we, I, cover, I, we cover everything that falls under the purview of this topic. We can just move on. All right, fine. Fine, just deleted. Uh, this is an interesting article in Nintendo Life about um, the Maya 2000, a rare NES accessory that only works with one game. Maya 2000 sounds like, Maya. I don't know, spreadsheet software. <laughs> or, or Maya the Bee that in the future. Wait, isn't Maya, Maya is a, an actual, uh, I think it's like a 3D program. Yeah, with an A. This is M-I-Y. Uh, yeah, Maya yeah. was one of the original Mia. 3D programs. Or is it Maya 2000? Okay. It's a, it's a golf simulator um, with a beat up box, which is funny. And it works with only with Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas's Greatest 18 holes of major championship golf, which is his official name, so long as it is. It's, yeah. it's yeah. the actual name. Um, and you swing a golf. There, there, you can swing or do putting with it. And it, it, it somehow somehow um, 
registers, I guess, the, the aim of your swing and the speed of it through this, like, it's, it's about a two and a half foot um, to three foot, like, block, green blocky rectangle, and you swing through it. So, yeah, when I saw this, I'm like, wow, that looks familiar. I have this with a different name, and I do. Uh, I have, it's called the True Swing. And the box, I have to find it. It's somewhere packed up. The box looks exactly the same, just with a different name. So I think it's really funny that they probably maybe relicensed this rare peripheral out with different names. And this was probably only sold at, you know, like weird golf stores. This wouldn't be in Toys R Us. Yeah, no, this is a very strange thing. I never knew about this until you got yours. I found one at a convention. And I I knew this existed because this is one of those things that you'd see posted once on Nintendo Age, you know, Nintendo Age ever. And I was at um, a Gamesters one, Game On Expo, like 2000. And the last time I went there, I was 18 or 17. And it was a dealer that had all this stuff up above, like like uh, consoles. And I was like, oh, okay, there's like an N64. There's like a first boy in the box. And it was sitting there. And I looked past it. And I walked away. It didn't register in my mind. And then I was like, it was like one of those delay reactions. I went like, eh. and I turned around, went back and said, how much is that? And I bought it immediately. I didn't care if it worked. It, mine doesn't work, unfortunately. The LED doesn't turn the on. The display is display doesn't turn on. It's cracked, right? It's cracked. Um, but this thing is so incredibly rare that I was trying to find someone to even buy a replacement. I couldn't do it. I think I've seen I think I've heard of it, of it being on eBay maybe twice in like 10, 10, 15 years. Someone had it on um someone had it on, I think someone posted about it on Reddit. And I tried to message them saying, Hey, I'll buy yours. If you have it, he never got back to me. Unfortunately, yeah, I'll think about it. I'm having twins right now. This is years ago. <laughs> I'm having twins. I'm in the middle of having twins right this I said, I'm expecting twins, so I'm like, so this is a cool thing. I was gonna do. I was gonna do an NES Punk video if mine worked. I was like, really cool because you know, it's like you can use a ball, but I don't think you need a ball for it because it, it just again, it, it's no. It says it does need a ball. Oh, I, it does need a ball. Yeah, it says he hit the ball. Oh, so you need a net then. You need to buy a net, which I don't think it comes with. Um, but yeah, you put it on the ground. You swing with the golf club. It, it's a cool device. I wish I could use mine. And this was just a little article. I guess they, they somehow knew this existed. I'm just really surprised that something this rare would have more than one name. Because I always knew it as a True Swing Golf. Which which is still, I think, a company? Or, or they did other shit? I don't know. There's like True Swing Golf or like the DS, for example. It might be like a brand name. True Swing. It might be a trademark thing. I don't know. Very, I'm very disappointed. I sent it off to, to our, our pal, uh, Quan, to look at it. He's like, no, nah, like, it's not like a stock replacement, that like LED screen or whatever is LCD screen. L- LCD. It's LCD. LCD, yes. Yeah, so that's all. Liquid crystal. So that doesn't work. You know what else doesn't work anymore, Ian? Apparently some copies of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in 3DS. Bam! Woo! <sighs> Nailed it. Um, anyways, uh, so word has been coming out that a bunch of... Um, Copies of this Pokemon game, I believe the European release specifically. A bunch of copies of it have just suddenly stopped working over the past week. Um, There's no real reason for it other than apparently this type of memory can fail. Um, But it's not supposed to fail for quite some time. Uh, It should be last, I think they say 20 to 35 years um, at least. And this is like, what, 10 years less? Yeah, 10 years from the minimum. Yeah, I mean, it's only about a 10-year-old game that, that should not be having these problems. So this is a bad batch of, of uh, EEPROM or whatever? But that's my, the only thing I can think of. So it says, you know, the, t- the first post in this page is, um, you know, in our very small German video games community, physical Pokemon or ass games have stopped working at a surprising rate. Six known cases to us just in their group. Um, failure rate of about 50% that they can see. So... <sighs> I, I, I've always worried about the DS and the 3DS cartridges just because they're thin and they're fragile and um, they're hard to clean. The teeth on the back can break easily, which makes it hard to get them back in. Uh, you, you can't put them in the system properly that way. But now we've got the reports of this happening. Um, yeah, that's a bummer. I mean, I don't really know what else to say besides that. I, you know, There's nothing you can do to fix it. Um, but I'm just hoping that we don't see a massive amount of 3DS game cartridge failures over the next few years have you ever heard of something like this happen before with with uh, one particular game that they all went like yeah. you have the like you have the original some of the original tar games have like some biodegradable shit on the chip i forget what it is but some of the, i mean the original run of tar games, some of those eventually failed sure the ones from like late 77 but that's the only thing i ever heard of where something went like 
due to something inside of it like that. No, nothing, nothing on a, with on like a, a massive scale or not massive, but at least like you knew it was a thing. Like we like I've had this. We see like my fucking chiller cart had a bad ROM because it was a shitty company, but all the other chiller carts are fine. But or a lot of them. Yeah, were, no, I've yeah. never seen like a mass failure of games like this. That wasn't a defect out the door, right? Like that, like the Sonic so, uh, Sonic Dreamcast. Adventure on the yeah. Dreamcast, for instance. Um, yeah, I've never seen anything like that. But uh, we test all the Pokemon games as they come in. Um, so far, the reports on this are that it's just the European copies. Uh, so yeah, I would have to agree with you that perhaps it was a bad batch on the manufacturing line or something like that i wonder if there'd be like some sort of class action lawsuit where if it was like not like what is the guarantee on something like that like if where it's like it's not user wear and tear if if they can say oh a thousand of us these games went and you you should replace it maybe nintendo would do the right thing and just i i, I don't think if, if they have a bunch of them laying around they can send them new ones Get the get get the, the 3ds factory hasn't been closed that long. It's only been a couple of years, right? They can get they can get get them produced probably again if they had to. Probably. Yeah, but I mean, I just I feel like ten years is too short of a it's time. Way too short. Too short of a time for stuff to be failing like that. Is that really? Is it really ten years old? It's not ten years old because the 3ds was 3ds 2011. It, yeah, it's like eight years old, I think. So okay. um, yeah, so that's even shorter. That's even crazier. That's nuts. But it, it's it's it definitely shouldn't be happening that quick. But it's too long, I think, for there to be any liability on Nintendo's part. I mean, what did all that limited warranty shit used to say in the back of the uh, goddamn um, in the back of the NES manuals? It was like ninety days. Was it only that much? Yeah, yeah. Like this well, card is guaranteed for ninety well, they, days against they, defect. Well, they didn't want people to think, oh, because it's dirty. Uh, you know. Sure. Damn it. Damn it! Just tell us to use rubbing alcohol. I can't believe it was. We were afraid of kids killing themselves. It was worth it for the, the greater good. If a couple kids killed themselves, the rest of us are cleaning their games. You can lose a couple kids. For I mean, come games. on! It was the eighties where we didn't we didn't wear bike helmets. <laughs> we were doing way yeah exactly. We were doing way worse shit. My sister was watching me. My parents went out when she was like eleven, and I was like seven. You, nowadays, you you get uh, child protective services involved for that. <laughs> Just uh, remember that. Don't open the door for anyone. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Yep. You can, maybe you can order pizza. Here's money or pizza. Like that's it. That that was a regular thing as an '80s kid, or or, or Gen X to, to like early millennial. That was the thing. Sorry, I'm thinking like old man. Back in my day, man, we were hey, every once in a while one of us was kidnapped off our bikes. But hey, we, we liked it. Well, it did happen. <laughs> Whole neighborhood was looking for me one time. I was I I, I went my bike to the next town over when I was to visit Kevin. Oh, you if probably I gonna, got in so much trouble. Not really. My father for that stuff wasn't really bad about it. but the whole neighborhood was looking for me they mm. thought i was like kidnapped basically i should have just said yeah i'm going over to see kevin because he hasn't he has an nes gonna go see kev he's got kung fu you know so i'm gonna go go hang out with kevin before he starts making fun of me a few years later what a game back. what a game what a game what a game um what else is happening i don't know nothing no nah. we're done with the podcast i think we're done that's it we're um going home there's a nintendo calculator app that's now on, on the Nintendo's eShop. I think I saw it's like eight euros. It's just a funny thing because it's like, because you wouldn't think about needing an app for your like Switch. Why would you ever need one? Yeah. Because every, everyone's phone has a calculator on it, but I just thought it was a goofy story. There's like clocks and stuff on there too. It's just, yeah. I mean, people make whatever. I feel like it was like, I'm going to follow this coding demo word for word and while i'm done with it i might as well publish it <laughs> i, I mean well it's probably it a, like like a built-in unit thing oh it's a, yeah it's, it's a calculator yes. yeah put a put a fun background on it or whatever and call it a call the day try to get your 99 cents out of it or whatever yeah well no this one's eight eight pounds oh so it's, eight pounds yeah well, it was trending it was not, not, not trending but it, i saw someone post about that like it's almost like it's something you do for either by accident or for attention you know what i mean it's like one of those weird things so yeah. Hmm. Does it have like a, a lot of features and functions? I mean, it can't be more feature rich than. I mean, does it do graphing? I mean, is it a graphing calculator? Do people use graphing calculators in high school anymore? That stuff's not on your phone. You know, they probably have apps. They probably have graphing calculator apps. I bet you TI, those assholes that was charged, it'd be 90 bucks for the TI 80. I bet you they still charge like 50, 60 bucks for the fucking app. I bet you they still. I, I bet you they do that. I'm looking. You right know how now. like GPS apps used to be like forty bucks. Yeah. Like ten years when they first started out, before they were basically free. I'm very, screw you, Ti. 
I want Hewlett Packard. I had a Hewlett Packard graphing calculator that had sound on it and space. No, I, I bet you they probably do still use the graphing calculators because it would prevent them from using the internet Everything and else? cheating out. Okay. Yeah, the graphing calculator only has what you, it has its functions. Yeah, although we used to, we used to like, we used to make notes in our graphing calculators to help us. I already told you my had sound right. I had a Hewlett Packard like this really weird graphing really? calculator that had sound, a speaker, and I had a, a Space Invaders game loaded onto it. It was awesome. Uh, I, I loved the graphing calculator and all the like free games and stuff that people used oh, yeah. to pass around. That was fantastic. Uh, Texas Instruments Calculator. Let's see. I'm not trying to put you down, Texas Instruments. You're a very important U.S. company. But I mean, you know, no, computers. No, it doesn't look like there is uh, one no, by them, surprisingly. There's a lot of free ones that have in-app purchases, and I'm sure those add up pretty quick. Some ads come in the side while you're trying to hit the, like, <laughs> the buy button. <laughs> yeah. It pesters you. Oh, surprising. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I assume there would be like a $50 app. Because the technology in those things is fucking nothing. Those calculators should be like $5 maximum. There's no. They're not coming up with new uh, new adding and subtracting methods. It's done. That's it. We're not discovering new math functions uh, to put in. We're discovering new maths every <laughs> yeah. day. Uh, it's, all about, it's all about this Dreamcast uh, handmade portable before we spiral out of control in this weird, wacky one. So, I'll, okay, I'll talk about it. So, Someone did a um, 3D printed, handheld Sega Dreamcast. Ooh! And th it's for sale uh, on on the eBay's. They've sold uh, five of them and four available. What this is in uh, German? No, no, no. NL uh, Netherlands is Dutch. Uh, I will translate to English. So um, yeah, four available, five sold. It's uh, 600 US dollars or 492 euros. Pat math. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars shipping. Expedited. I don't need expedited. But the object location, according to this, is in Hong Kong. So that's weird. It's almost like, what are you, like a middleman? To, to, to sell for someone in Hong Kong? Right. That's weird. But it's a cute-looking little device. Um, it has a, I, I, I hate the widescreen uh, LCD on it, but, you know, I'm sure, I'm, I'm not sure, but it, hopefully you can crop it or whatever. Yeah, but, if you can go 4-3 for, uh, for on this, I'd be much more interested in it. But it looks like a it looks like a mini Dreamcast. A mini Dreamcast with like with like a screen on top. With a screen on top, um, where the uh, disc tray would be. Um, there's a hole cut in, and that's where you can put a VMU. It's built in with a VMU. It's built in. With it better the VMU. be for six hundred dollars. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's a real VMU and real buttons and a thumb pad. Like like they basically cannibalized probably a Dreamcast controller parts and a, and a VMU they stuck in the middle. The uh, body, which I'm assuming is 3D printed, yes. looks very very nice. Looks nice. Um, yeah, the whole thing looks kind of cool. I, I would love to get my hands on it and just mess with it, but not at six hundred dollars. A little more sleeker than the N64 handhold. Yeah, just a, a touch. A touch. <laughs> that thing was like, mm, it's not really a handhold. It's it's a desktop thing. Uh, due to high demand and uh, on and off site through other channels, there might be delays in production. Um, it uses a GDMU uh, version 5.15B. So that's is that an optical drive thing? I believe it's an I believe it's real hardware with an optical, basically like an optical drive emulator. I'll look up to see what that costs because now we're getting more to the cost of that. Um, yeah, that's it's a GDMU clone 5. Point, uh, optical drive cardboard on Amazon. That costs. Um, yeah, it is an optical drive board. That costs 80 bucks. Okay, that's an 80 dollar item. You get that, you get a VMU is like 15 bucks, whatever. That's 100, 100. Yeah, I mean, okay, Dreamcast is like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. It's, yeah, it's a few hundred dollars of labor and, uh, you know, your yeah. time, R&D in the screen. So, you know, it's it's a cool thing. Definitely neat. It's a one-person production. They're made to order. Uh, can, I get the, can I get the black sports version? Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. That'd that be would nice, look right? nice. That'd be nice. I got, I got one of those in the box. Yeah. Um, yeah, VMU built in. Every auto shell is 3D printed. Do your research first about the software. It's not going to include all the games for you. You're going to have to get that on there yourself with whatever, a flash card or whatever, flash right. memory. So, yeah. Cool. I mean, it's cool. Well, I guess we'll probably, maybe we'll start seeing reviews of these on there. Yeah, it, it's a very clean... I mean, you always see the marks where it's, okay, I see how it's 3D printed here and there, but it's it's a cleaner design for 3D printed. Yeah, no, it is. It's surprisingly it, clean for it's 3D not a, printed. It's, just gonna t it's one of those ones that probably take a whole day and a half to 3D print. You know, this isn't something that's going to be quick and easy. There. Neato. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it for the intro. I'm feeling I'm feeling good, Ian. I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling okay. 